From being one of the most popular Rust server owners to being permanently blacklisted by Face Punch Studios in every way, shape, and form, makes you wonder what this person could have possibly done to be disciplined in such a way. This is the story of the most hated player in Rust. Ken. A fucking DDoS Fuck I'm gonna retards. fucking sell the cheapest goddamn cheats ever so Ken was a Canadian gamer who started his Rust career in the summer of 2016 and has quoted himself to be the Keemstar of Rust. For those who are unaware, Keemstar was a prominent online drama commentator, known for kicking the hornet's nest and starting some of the biggest internet controversies. I don't understand why I'm still getting hate. Hands up! I'm not starting my fucking cell! You fucking stupid- Ken would go on to do the same in Rust when he founded his first clan known as the Dog Clan. Doc Clan was extremely competitive, and Ken spent a vast amount of time building his reputation as a clan leader on some of Rust's most popular servers, such as Rustify, Rusty Moose, and Rustopia. However, controversy would be quick to arise around Doc Clan due to Ken's aggressive behavior. This started as he would begin to receive backlash from his former members and other clans. Myro Midens, a former Doc Clan member, would express his frustration in which he wrote to Ken. You are 21 to 23 years old, yet your mindset is of a 9 year old. Somehow you manage to still influence and manipulate people to do stuff they normally wouldn't do. 90% of the Rustopia population wants you gone. Not because we think you are so good, but purely because you were so toxic and immature and got a couple of hackers running with you. Ken would respond with, you were just a child dude, and I truly hope that one day you look at this moment and think, damn, I was indeed a child. Comments like this led Ken to escalate his hostility and poor demeanor towards other clans which only rallied more hate from the community. Fuck! How the fuck did you kids let them get that deep to get our fucking turret? Who the fuck was it? Everyone save your shadow play. Whoever it was is kicked. Send me your fucking shadow play. Shadow play right now, you fucking retards. Doc Clan during the process ironically would begin to develop to be one of the better clans in the game, but at a sharp cost of Kin's reputation and threatening to perform denial of service attacks on members who were performing poorly. It's Komodo, this fucking dumb kid. We're gonna fucking DDoS your ass so hard. <laughs> you were moved. In late 2018, he decided to change his clan name to Ego, which symbolically showed the state of his clan and how the community felt about him. Still persistent to be the best clan in the game, Ken continued to rank high on his performance compared to most clans, but ultimately felt threatened by one individual known by the username of Nico. Nico was considered to be one of the best clan leaders in Rust of the late 2010s, playing with now popular YouTubers such as HJune, Motion, Tacular, and Tesla, who were formerly some of the most competitive clan players. Nico had a strong grip over the clan scene. This antagonized Kin being in Nico's shadow, as he ultimately wanted to be the best, and would take the actions needed to do so. In the early 2020s, the clan scene in Rust began to change as the longtime players now getting older preferred servers with modded gameplay mechanics that took less time to play. This would lead to the rise in popularity of the YouTuber server Stevius by Stevie, catering to the new preferred modded clan gameplay players were seeking. It would be followed up by Kin's rival, Nico, pursuing what many considered to be the first real clan server for Rust known as Vital Rust. At this point, the popularity of Ego Clan was at an all-time high. Kins was not. He was banned from Vital Rust for his disruptive behaviors and taunting the Vital staff, and specifically Nico. This led Kin and his clan trying to help Stevius by pulling clans away from Vital to hurt their server. However, Stevius would want nothing to do with Kin as well, with his continued poor behavior and drama he was bringing to the server. This would lead Kin and his clan being banned from Stevius, one of the last servers they were allowed to play on, with nowhere left to go, no experience of running servers, and a terrible community reputation. Ken came up with the incredible idea that he would start his own Rust server, known as Affinity. The word Affinity means a spontaneous or natural liking or sympathy for someone or something, which is exactly what Ken wanted for himself and the server. A place where players didn't need to use a filter, and could not get banned for toxic behavior. A place to show people what the Rust clan community was really like. Can I get a can I get a gang gang? <laughs> Ken 
Tim would also not forget his motivation to start his server, and was committed to take down his former clan rival, now Rust server owner, Nico. Initially, Ken's server had a lot of problems. Community members he abused previously wanted to see him fail and attacked his server with denial of service attacks and continued to defame him. Being unexperienced, Ken could have simply given up, but as a clan leader, he never did. So why would he give up on his server? Ken turned things around in the summer of 2021. He got a solid developer who fixed the majority of the server's technical issues. He came up with new event ideas which intrigued some of the most veteran Rust players, such as King of the Hill, where clans competed for valuable goods in a timed event. Maze, where clans had to navigate a shrinking maze and they needed to be the last to survive the event. And finally, Bounties, where clans could put money where their mouth was for prize pulls and defending from the rival teams. These ideas were game changers for the clan scene and furthered the server's reputation, giving players the freedom to choose what they wanted for the server and nailing other server competition by giving out free store items to players. It seems affinity was unstoppable. Ken was now bringing in around 20,000 to 30,000 a month for his server business with a full team of paid staff to support him. For once in Ken's Rust career, things finally started to turn around and he became respected as a server owner. But his bad past was now just catching up with him. One of Kin's main policies with Affinity was no filter, and not only did this include players being able to say anything they want, but Kin could as well. Kin would troll his players, make continued threats to other servers, now with freedom and newfound power to do whatever he pleased. This eventually put Kin on the radar with Face Punch, as server owners such as Nico from Vital gathered evidence to build a case to get rid of Ken for his past actions and his current threatening business practices for other servers. Months went by as the heat turned up and the drama continued to get worse with the server owners and Affinity. Fight. Coming to the breaking point of January of 2022, Ken's server Affinity Rust was officially blacklisted by Face Punch Studios. His downfall was ultimately set off by two things. A TikTok had aired of Ken's admin abusing by throwing grenades and randomly killing players. Face Punch did not like how this reflected on their community. Ken also ignorantly swore at Face Punch staff who joined his Rust server and told the developer to leave if he didn't like the server. Face Punch and the server owner community had had enough of Ken's behavior and gave him a notice he could no longer operate his servers. Ken tried to make amends and work it out with Face Punch due to the massive community he had grown but he was ultimately too late. Face Punch wanted nothing to do with him. Saying his final goodbyes in a 2000 member Discord podcast, the community assumed that would be the last they would see of Kin. Many loyal Affinity players were sad, and many server owners were happy. You need to demand the things that you've gotten when Affinity was here. Just because Nico had to call the feds and get us blacklisted, which is essentially what's happened. I won the war, and then he called the feds. <laughs> That's pretty much what has happened here. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and demand things. However, this was a short-lived ending as Kin decided he was not going to let Face Punch stop him and his community. He returned to Rust. Even with his server being blacklisted, players were still able to connect as long as they had Affinity's server IP. Affinity immediately returned in full popularity with a massive queue, and players once again got to live out their clan fantasies via Affinity. Face Punch and server owners became upset that Kin's coffin was not permanently shut. This led to Face Punch adding code specific to Kin, which would not let him operate his servers at all via Rust. Ken officially lost access to play Rust and run his clan. Affinity was permanently blacklisted. Ken's server business was officially shut down. If we've learned anything so far about Ken, it's that he does not like to lose. So in his final attempt of closure, he did a podcast where he announced he'd be giving free cheats to destroy the server owners who hurt him the most and take revenge on Face Punch Studios. This was finally the end. As server owners had prepared for his last malicious attacks, which led Kin to slowly fade into the good night with the vow that one day we might see him online again, running a new game, 
with his community. So Affinity Servers is going to become Affinity Services. I'm going to fucking sell the cheapest goddamn cheats ever sold on Rust, and I'm going to use a part of the profits to buy accounts for you guys to cheat with me on Alice and Vital. Let's fucking go. Which leads us to our final question, which I'll let you answer. Was Ken actually a bad guy? Even with Ken's negative actions, he truly did do some great things for the community. He had employed 10 employees for Affinity, most of them teenagers, giving them jobs that paid very well for their age with a staff bankroll of around 5000 a month. He also started a fundraiser to help a clan member who was dying of cancer, which fortunately was able to get better with treatment. As much as we may think Ken was really that evil, to many players, they feel he just wanted to entertain the clans he enjoyed playing against over his six years of Rust, and the argument could be made that he was only putting on an act for everyone in the community. On the other hand, what cannot be denied is some of the more negative things proven about Kin. Denial of service attacks on other servers and harassment towards specific community members, doxing personal information from individuals he hated, and worst of all, selling cheats and endorsing cheating at his exit of Rust. If you love or hate Kin, what ultimately cannot be disputed is he was an important character in the game's community, for what he made in the Rust community with Affinity. He ultimately represented your average Rust clan player, and how he felt about the game, which is why he was so notorious and relatable with the community. He was vocal in the way many Rust players act every day.